Hey guys, it's Keely. Um, today I'm going to be filming a video about all of my most used art supplies as well as some of my favorite art supplies. Um, yeah, I have a pile of the supplies that I use most often and most regularly and then I also have a pile of the supplies that I don't necessarily use that much. I just really, really enjoy. Um, so to start, I'm going to... Um, begin with the eraser I like to use. So this is a Dollar Rani eraser. It's pretty basic. I bought it in a pack of two um, at Blix. Uh, the reason I like to use it is just because it's pretty compatible with the watercolor paper I like to use and the pencils. So it doesn't um, tear through the paper really or uh, smear the pencil. It really lifts it pretty well. So yeah. Um, I'm not saying this is the best eraser, it's just the one that I use most often. Next, um, for my regular sketching, I like to use this uh, Papermate mechanical pencil in size uh, 0 0.5 millimeters. I have a ton of these things and they really just are my favorite for um, just regular sketching. I hate having to sharpen regular pencils and so I find that mechanical pencils are just the most convenient. And it also has this little twist-up eraser um, that I use quite a bit for like smaller details when I need to just remove a little area. And then it clicks out lead. And yeah, it's pretty easy to find refills for, and they're just, they're pretty nice. So yeah. Next thing I want to talk about is these Prismacolor Coal Erase um, colored pencils. I bought these at Dick Blix for, I want to say they were about in between a dollar and a dollar fifty each. And these are the only colors of them I had. I bought them all at once um, because I had never tried them before, but I had heard other people that really liked them. So I bought the colors that I figured I would be using the most. I bought them in light green, lavender, rose, and copy not NP blue. I don't know what that means. Um, but yeah, these are pretty good. I don't usually have a problem with the lead breaking. The They erase pretty well as long as you sketch pretty lightly with them. Um, I like all of the colors, but I especially like the rose one. As you can tell, it's much shorter than the rest of them. Um, but yeah, if I'm going to do a watercolor painting with no um, fine liner you know, ink or anything. I like to base them, start the base with these instead of like a graphite pencil um, because I think it adds just like a really nice glow to a watercolor painting. Um, so yeah, I really like using these and I want to get more colors, but I just, it's just one of those things I've kind of been putting off. I just haven't gotten them yet, but I really like them. So yeah, I'd recommend these. Um, the next thing I use a lot is um, this uh, Pigma Micron Pen in size um, 0 0.05. This uh, is kind of my like staple black outline sort of pen. I like them because they last for a pretty long time. They're pretty inexpensive, nicely pigmented. When I erase over them, they don't tend to um, fade too much. When I watercolor over them, they don't tend to fade too much. Um, and yeah, they come in like tons of colors. I have lots of colors, but the black one is the one out of all of them that I personally use the most. Um, so yeah, I think you can get these at Blix again for in between a dollar and two dollars. Um, and I would really recommend them. Next is this um, Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. I This ran out of ink like forever ago, and I'm too much of a tight ass to buy new um, cartridges for it. So what I usually do is I just dip the pen in uh, India ink and use it that way. Um, I think eventually I will probably buy more refills, but they're just kind of expensive. And I haven't had much luck with refilling the cartridge myself with India ink, so I just dip it. Um, but yeah, when I want that brush pen look, this is the brush pen I go to. I've tried Micron brush pens, but they have a felt nib that's... Um, it gets kind of like fuzzy and fray really quickly, and so it doesn't really give you a sharp line. Um, this, though, I it's really easy to get a sharp line, and I really like the control that you have over this one compared to the Micron ones. So, yeah, this is pretty good. 
Next um, is this Sakura Jelly Roll Pen in white. This is what I use for a lot of really fine white details. This one's running out. I need to get a new one. Um, these are a double-edged sword because on the one hand, they are really good, but then also if you use them incorrectly, they're really, really shitty. Um, I've found that you can only really go over the area with this once before it's game over. If you try and go over twice, it just scratches straight through the little ball, um, the little ballpoint end, just kind of scratches straight through the ink that you previously laid down with it and kind of defeats the purpose. Um, so only go over once and don't expect too much, but generally speaking, they go over watercolor and all that pretty easily and they're pretty pigmented. So yeah, just be careful. Generally speaking, for most of my highlights, I like to use this though. This is the Higgins Waterproof Ink in white. It comes, or at least this one is, a uh, one fluid ounce bottle. Um, I got this for like four bucks, I think, at Blix, which is where I get pretty much all my art supplies. Um, it's really, really pigmented. I just use it with a paintbrush and it usually turns out pretty well. Um, but yeah, this is, it's pretty opaque, and I like it a lot. So. This is a Niji water brush pen in size large, I believe. For a really long time, I thought that this was the size medium, but I think this is actually the size large, um, because I have two sizes, and I think I have large and medium, whereas before I thought I had the medium and small. Um, but this is pretty good as far as water brush water brushes go. Um, I find it works really well if you want to travel with watercolors because you have all your um, rationed water in the tank of the pen here. Um, you can fill it up with colored watercolors or like your own ink or whatever and they are pretty good. Um, I do find they can be a little bit difficult to clean but I like it and we get along pretty well. So yeah, I think this was about nine bucks at Blix. This is something that I have been using a lot recently. Ooh, look at how they glow in the light. Um, these are some watercolor, well, they're not watercolor, they're Taclon brushes. And I honestly don't know what the brand is. They just say Royal Taclon on them. And um, I realize it's kind of useless to show you something that I say that I like and then not tell you what the brand is. Um, but I got these at Walmart for like four bucks for this whole pack because I had needed some Taclon brushes because I had ruined mine with masking fluid because I'm a really bad person and I'm terrible at cleaning things. And um, yeah, I've just been really liking them. I've found that personally, the quality of your watercolor brush is the least important thing to me. Like this was literally bought at Walmart for four bucks for all these and these are like excellent. I love them and they work just as well as my more expensive brushes. So if you're just starting out, invest in good paper, um, invest in slightly better paint, um, but paint brushes to me, they just don't make as big of a difference. I know other people will disagree with that, but that's just honestly how I feel about it. Next is my watercolor paper. Um, this is the watercolor paper that I use most often. It is the Canson Montval watercolor uh, sketchbook. I usually use it in the 9x12. Um, this is a 5.5 by 8.5 because my 9x12 is currently used up and I need to buy a new one. Um, but I really like this watercolor paper. It does not really buckle too much. It's pretty inexpensive. I like having the ring bound side here because if you open it up, um, it has perforations on the edge here, so it's really easy to remove them without damaging when you're done. It's easy to just uh, fold up and take with you. And yeah, the quality of the paper is really nice, and it's pretty inexpensive. Um, when I'm not using this, I'm using the um, Canson XL watercolor paper pad. Um, that, I have to admit, does buckle a little bit more. I don't really know what the difference between the, these papers are because they are both... I believe cold press 140 pound papers. So other than that, I mean, I don't really know what the difference is, but I find that this one just buckles a little bit less than the other one. Next 
Um, this is my watercolor palette. This I use almost every single day, no matter what. Um, this palette I purchased at Blix for about 8 bucks, I think. And it's pretty standard. I don't know the name of the brand because it honestly didn't have a name on it when I purchased it. Like, not even on the packaging. Um, but it's pretty hefty and it has a lot, as you can see, it has a lot of uh, slots for the watercolors to go in. So that's pretty nice. And then if you open it up, you can see my watercolors inside. So this is filled with Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors. Um, I had had a problem with my slightly cheaper watercolors splitting over time. They hadn't when I had first purchased them, and I believe they were the Dollar Brownie, um, like 24 to a pack for like $8. And they had started splitting when I was using them over time. They would separate a little bit once I painted with them. And so I decided it was about time to invest in some actually good quality watercolor paints. So I went to Blix and I found these. I looked up some reviews on them and they all seemed to be really good reviews. And they happened to be on sale when I bought them. So that was kind of a bonus. Um, at Blix, I think I got them for about $4 a color. No, I think I got them for about $4.50 a color actually. Um, but I think that was during their really big back-to-school sale. Um, in this palette, you can see I have a lot of blues, um, and I have a lot of purple-pink tones, and quite a bit of green. I, I go back and forth because I always entertain the idea of putting an orange in here, but I just never want to use an orange that I can't make with these colors. So honestly, don't feel bad about only keeping the colors that you know you're going to use. You don't need to have like a full colored palette. Um, but yeah, I use this every single day. It's really easy to clean. It's convenient to pack up and take with you. Um, I love having my pre-designed palette um, that I did myself. And yeah, I really, really like it. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the products that I really like, but I don't necessarily use that much. So first off is this Higgins um, Waterproof Ink. It's the same as the white one I showed you in magenta. It's a really, really pretty, um, like, bright, bright pink color. I love to use it. I don't use it that much because you do need a very specific situation for it. But it's a gorgeous color, and I really, really like it. Um, it works really well with watercolor or as a watercolor, um, coupled with watercolors, under watercolors, over watercolors. Um, so it works really well for me, and I really like the color. I have probably three or four more colors of these, and I like them all, though this magenta one is the one I probably lean towards the most. Next, um, we have this Blick Liquid Watercolor. And what color is this? I don't know what color this is. Oh, it's just right there. Just straight up gold. I know they have several different shades of gold of this. Um, it comes in an 8 fluid ounce bottle. I don't remember how much this was when I purchased it. Um, this, honestly, I have no idea the context in which this was designed to be used as. Um, I would not recommend just straight up painting with it because it's not... It's pigmented, but it's not opaque, if that makes sense. Um, so if you want, like, a wash of gold on your paper that looks like this, you're not going to get it with this stuff. This, I, however, like to take, and I like to mix into watercolors, and it creates this beautiful gold sheen, um, like these veins of shimmer and shine through the watercolor. And it's just a really, like, multi-dimensional uh, look that it gives. And I really, really like it. And this was, I kind of purchased on, like, a whim. And I'm actually really glad that I did because it is gorgeous. Next is masking fluid. I'm not that good at using masking fluid, but I have to admit that I love using it. So I need to practice more with it. Um, this is the Utrecht Watercolor Art Masking Fluid. Um... I don't think there's anything special about it. Uh, it's kind of straightforward. It's just masking fluid. Um, but there's some people out there that can do some really great things with masking fluid, and I'm kind of a loser. So, um, But I want to practice more with it, and it's just one of those things that I really enjoy using. So, yeah, I would recommend this. It works pretty well. Um, 
I would not recommend buying the clear or white stuff. Um, I find it's really hard to locate after you've painted it um, to remove it. So uh, this stuff is easy to remove. You can just take it off with um, a little rub of your fingers or an eraser if you prefer. And yes, it's a little bit yellowish, so it's pretty easy to find against white paper. And yeah. Next, I have another Sakura Jelly Roll pen. This one is in metallic gold. This is what you want if you want a very pigmented gold color in a like fine pen sort of edition, I suppose. Um, this is what I like to use for all of my fine gold accents on pretty much everything. It's super pigmented. I find it will go over any color, no problem. Um, again, pretty inexpensive. And yeah, I can't actually say enough good things about this. I need to buy way more of these because this one is running out as well. Next are these two um, microns, or I guess Pigma brushes. In the color is... What is this color actually? It's a waterproof pen in... Why can't I find the color on this? Um, I think it's like rose or something or like permanent rose, I don't remember. Um, but I like both of these a lot, A, because I love the color, and B, um, because one is a 0 0.5 or 0 0.05, I don't know exactly what that is. Um, and one is in the brush. And I know I was saying that the brush pens of these are not that good. Um, which is true, they're not that good after you've used them for a while, but initially they are fantastic. Um, they're pretty fun to use. I do find that I get a little bit more resistance from the nib than I do with the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. Um, but I'm okay with that because these are honestly like a dollar. Um, and they come in all sorts of beautiful colors, and yeah, I just really like sometimes using a really fine pink outline, and I just find these slightly more consistent than using, like, uh, an ink. So, yeah. Okay, next up is this Speedball Dip Pen. Um, okay, so... A, I know this is not very clean because I didn't clean it last time I used it, but I purchased a set of Speedball Dip Pens from Blix, um, and I had a really hard time with them at first. I decided almost immediately that I did not like using dip pens, I never wanted to use dip pens, and uh, dip pens could uh, go to hell. But after using it a couple more times and switching over from using the larger one that came in the pack to this smaller one, I love this smaller one. It is so much fun to use. It's so easy to use with different colored inks. And yeah, it's like, it's, I don't know. It's just really different than using a felt nib outliner pen. Um, there is absolutely a learning curve. And if you're not dedicated to learning how to use them, do not purchase them because they are... It, the set wasn't that expensive, it was like 16 bucks, but like, I was going to be really pissed off if I had flushed 16 bucks down the shitter buying pens that I was never going to use. So yeah, these were really a fun, a fun little item that I found, and I would recommend you guys trying them if you are interested in them, because um, it's a unique experience. Lastly, I have an item that I have a very difficult love-hate relationship with. These are my Holbein Artist Squash. Holbein? Holbein? I don't know how you say the name. Um, it's the Assortment D in a 12 color set. Um, the colors, let me see, what are the colors? They are Geranium, Permanent Yellow, uh, Permanent Yellow, wait, what is that? Permanent Yellow Orange, Permanent Yellow, um, leaf green, emerald green, cypress green, turquoise blue, cobalt blue, violet, rose, um, jet black, and permanent white. And the, hmm, okay, gouache is really, really difficult. I'm not gonna lie. It is the most difficult medium that I think I have ever attempted to work with, but when it goes right, it goes so right, and I love it. Um, I've 
thrown out more paintings done with gouache than I have kept because it is a bitter, bitter son of a bitch to work with. Um, but other than that, they're awesome and I love them and they're very, very pigmented. Actually, I have a, a little swatch card that I did here with them right after I got them. Um, you can see they're really, really pigmented. They're beautiful colors. Um, I had had a cheaper set of gouache a while back when I first, um, you know, learned about it. And I thought I just, like, straight up didn't like gouache. And I think that was just because that particular paint was really difficult to work with. Like, the texture was weird and all that. But then recently, I decided as a more mature and developed artist, I guess, um, I wanted to teach myself how to use gouache. So my fiance bought me this set as an anniversary gift. Um, this is not for the faint of heart. This was a very expensive set of paints. I think this was about $50 for these 12. Um, which honestly makes my armpits hurt to think about because that's so much money on paint. Um, but they are really, really beautiful. And if you are a serious gouache artist, I would absolutely recommend these. Um, they are really beautiful and I love them. <laughs> okay guys, that's everything today. Um, I will try my best to have all of the products I talked about today linked down below. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope that if you guys have the opportunity to, you can try out some of these products and let me know what you think of them. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Um, this month I think I'm going to try and put out two videos a week just to see what that output speed looks like. Um, so make sure to follow me if you want to stay updated with those. And yeah, um, thanks for tuning in. I hope you all have a really good day and thanks for watching. Bye!